Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Impact, Mission Impact. My name is Tracy V. Allen. I'm the owner of TVA Consulting Group, where I help social enter, um, social impact businesses to design, build, and fund their ventures so that they can live the lifestyles that they desire while impacting their communities. <laughs> design, build, and fund. Yes. <laughs> The first three letters is F U N. It ain't all. I know, right? Know, right? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Ty Boon. I am owner of Ty Boon Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. And we're talking about year end giving around the year, right? Because we wrapping yeah. up, we wrapping up the year. Yes, we are. We are in November. <laughs> so yes, we're practically done with the year because you and I were just talking about we're taking off the whole week of Thanksgiving. So that's minus one week. Then mm -hmm. we're taking off the last week, two weeks of December. That's three weeks done. So at this point, we probably only have four weeks left in the year. The, week, the year is over, <laughs> right? Which, yeah. which kind of you know is a very important topic to talk about year in giving because you know organizations have their fiscal years and their, you know their cutoffs, but. As a society, we look at things in calendar year terms, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we'll get into these organizations and we'll let like year after year after year go by. And we have no idea where we're standing as an organization. True. We don't know what, how much money we've got. We don't know where the holes are. We don't know what we're missing, what we're lacking. We don't know how much support we gained. We don't know what the problems were. You know, um, last week I talked about, in another session, I talked about energy and effort going into the next mm -hmm. year. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have the same energy and effort um, next year that you have this year, mm -hmm. you're probably going to have the same amount of money. <laughs> That's probably what's going to happen. Yeah. So, so when you're thinking about your end of your goal and how much do you need, you know, what's happening in you know, the end of the calendar, where you, how are you measuring your financial assessments with your organization? How much are you missing? First of all, why are you missing? This. That's the big question, right? Why are you missing it? Yes. Not put forth the energy and effort that you planned to put forth mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year. And if you didn't, you can post through that next year. If not, you're going to be in the same situation, right? If you have a huge deficit, if, you're, if your goal was to raise, you know, $100,000 by the end of calendar year 2023 and you're at $10,000, you are missing $90,000. Mm -hmm. right. That's a whole lot of money. If you anticipate on getting folks to donate to you or to contribute to your organization's, you know, ninety thousand dollars in four weeks or less, mm -hmm. what kind of energy are you going to put forth in the next four weeks that you didn't put forth in the past of 12, 11 months? Right. So you might have to scale back a little bit. <laughs> And that takes me to my point. What I what I wanted to talk about is that I find that a lot of organizations leave the majority of their fundraising efforts to be done during this time of the year. Mm -hmm. So they're banking heavily on Giving Tuesday and year end fundraising, which goes right now to December 31st, right? For most people. Um, they're trying to utilize that for the bulk of their fundraising goals because they know this is giving season and they know that people are a lot more free or freely giving of their money during this season for a variety of different reasons, right? Whether it's tax breaks or they want to feel like they ended the year on a good note and that they were instrumental in helping someone else in society. It could be any of those things, right? But this is the time of year that a lot of people give. But like Ty said, if you have a $90,000 goal that should have been met throughout the year and it's still at $90,000 and we are in giving season, what are you going to do differently in these last two months that you haven't done all year? right? So you have to think about that. Yes, you should have a giving season goal. You should have a year-end fundraising goal, but it has to be comparable to what you've done all year. Mm -hmm. So when you're sitting down, and we're going to talk about how you plan for next year too, but when you were sitting down last year planning for this year, your goals should have been broken up in quarters. And if you weren't meeting your quarterly goals, at least, how do you intend now to take all three quarters and drop mm -hmm. it into Q4? 
It just doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. People are generous, but I mean, they're not that generous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, unless you have they like, they don't like me, right? who didn't give anything all year to any charities and they're just like, oh, we need to get rid of this $90,000. That's the only way you're going to get, you know, get that big mm -hmm. donation because you didn't put any effort in mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to what we talked about when we talked about Giving Tuesday, right? It's planning and preparing for mm -hmm. that giving. Because again, you do not want to treat people like ATM machines, right? So you should always be out there championing your organization, campaigning on a regular basis. Even if you don't have a hard ax at the end of your campaign, the fact is they know you're a charity. They know that's what charities need is money. But if you're mm -hmm. putting it out there and they're like, they're connecting with the story that's your organization is telling. They're connecting with the people that you're helping. They can see that you're actually helping people because that's a big thing too, right? A lot of times when a lot of these charities are not getting funds, especially from individual donors, is because these individual donors cannot see the work that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And when they can't see the work, it's because you don't have it displayed on your website and you're not doing anything on social media. We literally just talked about you don't that, trust that you, right? a lot it's of our clients. Covid, right? <laughs> we can't. And you said try to use like you yeah. know, even if you have a ninety thousand dollar goal that you still have to reach. And there, there's this amazing philanthropist that comes on and say, I just want to give somebody $90,000. Mm -hmm. What makes this person want to give it to you? Right. That stuff that you're talking about yeah. now. I can see that you're doing the work. You're visible. Mm -hmm. I can go visit your social media sites and I can see that there is some momentum. Exactly. With your organization. Mm -hmm. and you can sit there and you're halfway um you know engaging with your audience on mm -hmm. social media where you posted last december and we don't see you again until right. you know <laughs> breast cancer awareness month because that's mm -hmm. what your, your organization is about and then we don't see you again until end of year giving that's not consistent right and then i think one of the things that people in in leadership roles in the organization, so like the ED, right, um, tends to forget when looking to fundraise either for Giving Tuesday or Year End Giving is to deploy their board of directors. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a huge thing. Um, people tend to sleep on it. And the reason that they, and we're not going to get all the way into it today, but I just want to leave this as a caveat. The reason that they don't deploy the board of directors is because they never train their board of directors how to fundraise. <laughs> no permission half the time. Like, what are we doing? What is the organization for? Um, you and uh, you know, I, I tell people, you know, your, your board, your board is the your first line of defense, right? Your yes. board is supposed to drive the car. You're kind of like you're just taking out kind of the passengers mm -hmm. in this ride. Your board is supposed to be leading you on. Even when I see fundraisers and things on social media, I cringe a lot of times because they still mm -hmm. sit there at zero dollars or two dollars or whatever. And I'm like, is there not a board? Can, can somebody make this campaign look better than this? Can somebody get it? Well, see, be, that's because, you know, it's like you hire someone, but you never gave them the job description, mm -hmm. right? They didn't understand the true job description. You didn't have other duties, right? These other duties. <laughs> and the other duties at, at the time, yeah. right? <laughs> you didn't I have that in that contract. Right? You got to doing everything. Right. Especially so, a nonprofit. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? But you didn't have that in there. So then now why do they feel they never had that mentality that they were part or the key man in the fundraising um, component of your organization? So they see you putting up all these um, these uh, fundraisers. They're not going to engage with it because a lot of times and I know people hate to hear this. A lot of times people come onto boards to bolster their resumes, mm -hmm. their, that's their social standing. That's a lot of times what happens. It's not about the organization itself. It's not about the impact that they can create. It's not about helping the community. It is simply to make themselves look good um, when they're applying for jobs or just in their social circle. Well, I'm going to tell you the truth. One of the first boards I sat on, I, I went for the food because- they Yeah, you told me that. <laughs> I love Italian, right? So and they, they would have oh 
Wait, we didn't have like the best, like <laughs> board meetings, they would always pay the rent, like my favorite Italian place. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. So I'm just gonna sit here, like, I'm just, I ain't even, I wasn't yeah. engaged or anything. I'm just like, look, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, but no, seriously, though, that's that's what happens a lot of times. And that's why, like you said, you'll see a social media campaign that is geared towards, um, you know, a, a particular fundraiser and it's at zero and it's been up there for three, four, five days. Mm -hmm. And you're like, where's the board? The board's not supporting it. First of all, they probably don't even know it's up there because they don't follow right. the page and then they don't realize that they're supposed to be giving. So right. that's why board development is essential. You yeah. should not have an organization where you're not having some type of PD for your board at least twice a year. Yeah, and if you're not supported internally, you can't expect for people external to your organization to support you. Exactly. And this is why we see fundraisers or end of year giving campaigns flop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because people are watching. Like people they watch are. before <laughs> they give to you, they'll watch it. They'll, yes. they'll look and they'll see. You oh, know how long I will watch an organization? Mm -hmm or even a coach or whoever, sometimes for a year before I spent before you, yeah. You're like, okay, now it's time. <laughs> now I'm a little, I feel yeah. a little safe. You know, and, and you said, you know, no, the no life and trust factor, even mm -hmm. when you're on social media, I don't have to know you personally, but mm -hmm. if you are engaging enough, if I follow you long enough, I feel like I know I you. Know, right. Like mm -hmm. I may not know anything, really anything about the true you, mm -hmm. but I feel like it because you've been, you're in my face enough mm -hmm. that I can, that I can build my, even if you don't have a clue who I am, I follow folks right now on social media who haven't a clue who I am, but I feel <laughs> like they're my best friend because yeah. I know them. If something happened to them right now, I'm devastated. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. They don't know me from a can of paint. Yeah. yeah. You know? And that's how your organization should be. You should be just that visible um, so that when end of year giving comes, you're not acting like a, you know, that you're just there for the money. Right. And then and if I'll you're you at the end of the year, you have to continue the relationship. Right. And like, like I was saying, it's not just a relationship with the audience who you want to give you money. It's developing your board and your volunteers as well. The staff, mm -hmm. everybody needs to understand how to get to this money everybody mm -hmm. so they need that professional development when mm -hmm. you're planning your budget and I'm, i might leave that for the next but remind me to talk about it when we talk about planning for the following year mm -hmm. as part of your budget you need to have professional development in there mm -hmm. you need to have um monies in your budget for a consultant to come in and go over you know help you go over the business you need to have um, monies in there for a consultant to come in and do strategic planning. So all of these things, when you're thinking about year end strategies, think about it. Okay. I don't have it this year, but I'm listening to what Ty and Tracy are saying. And I realize, oh, wow, there's some gaps, right? Mm -hmm. Some, some deficits in the, th in the strategies that we have currently for getting funds. So let's implore those for the upcoming year, 2023, you know? So, all right. I think that's it for me. Do you have anything else you want to say? Time? I know nothing. Y'all better get to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Until next time, guys. Thank you for joining us for Mission Impact Series today. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and drop your comments below because we definitely want to hear from you. Okay? Bye. Bye <laughs>